currently we are in the Dorop National Park. This was only established in December 2010 to protect certain areas around the, the town of Swakop and Walfus Bay. Today what we have here is our horse's graveyard and the beginning of the story starts in the year 1914. The South African military issued 30,000 animals, horses and mules to help with the handover process from the then German Southwest Africa to British Southwest Africa. So these horses were sent up with soldiers just to make sure the handover process went smoothly. So a lot of the horses were sent overland from Pretoria in South Africa all the way up here to Swakopmund. Some were sent by ship from Cape Town up here as well. And then further, they were sent overland from here all the way to Korup, which is near Etosha National Park. They had an extreme drought in that year and they could not actually feed all those animals in that area near Etosha. There was just not enough food available in the bush. So what they actually had to do was send a lot of the horses back to the coastline here. It was actually easier to bring fodder, food, by ship from Cape Town to Swakopmund to feed the animals here than to find available food anywhere in the bush. The animals that were sent back to the coast here actually were kept at a horse station a couple of kilometers from Swakopmund town. In that area the horses contracted a disease which comes across in horses or horse family. The disease is known as horse influenza and it is also dangerous for human beings, uh, they realized later. They sent a message back to Pretoria to the magistrate to please send their vet, the state vet, to assist with the situation here in Swakop. Halfway through their ship journey, they actually hit a sandbank in the south of Namibia and they managed to wreck their ship. That gentleman and his crew were only uh, brought up by another ship from Cape Town a few days later. And by the time they arrived back to Swakop, the public had already decided to take matters into their own hands to protect the colony. They were not sure if the people would arrive. So what they did is they brought all those sick animals into the desert here and one by one they proceeded to each give a horse and mule a headshot and they buried them out here in mass graves. You can actually see on this skull here the bullet where it penetrated. So if you look at any of the skulls in this area you will notice that uh, each took a headshot. But very interesting as well is you can see the lichen that has formed on the skull. You can see they've been here quite long. They do get buried by sand periodically. It gets opened up with the predominant southwesterly winds. And that is the only reason that you can still see all these bones intact is because they were preserved under the sand. If they were exposed to the elements throughout the time, they would have actually broken down. This gravesite specifically here goes about 200 meters in a long line. It's about one and a half to two meters deep, one and a half to two meters wide. And this is only one of three sites that we have in this general area. And between those three sites now, we have 1,695 horses and 944 mules which were exterminated over the process of about three weeks in 1915. So that's just over 100 years ago that this history took place here. Yeah. 